In the last few weeks, I've been getting a lot of viewers of the channel ask me about ArchCraft OS, which is a Arch-based Linux distribution, I guess, that is minimal and has some window managers installed by default, and it's supposed to look really good, and it's supposed to be all flashy, and it's supposed to be kind of the Arch-based distribution of choice for people that love things like the r slash Unix porn subreddit. Right. If you love those beautiful Unix porn screenshots, right, you're going to love Archcraft. It's what people tell me. And I don't like reviewing Linux distributions very often these days. I don't do too many of these anymore. And I especially don't like reviewing Linux distributions that are not for me. I know they're not for me. And I, I, I'm just going to tell you right now, I prefer function over style and when I did that Instant OS review a couple of months back, and I completely trashed Instant OS, and unfairly in many ways, but I knew going in I wasn't going to like it anyway, even if it worked just fine for me. It, it's not my kind of Linux distribution, not my kind of window manager, flashy with all the whiz-bang effects and all of that. I fear Archcraft may suffer the same fate. I'm going to try to give it a fair look. This will be a first impression look. I downloaded the ISO. Archcraft just had a release, by the way. They released a new ISO on August 18th, which is just four days ago from this recording. So it's a very fresh ISO. I'm going to spin up a quick VM, and we're going to take a look at it in a live environment directly off the ISO. Before we get into the virtual machine, though, I do want to show you guys the Archcraft website, because... It is a very well done website. It's very professional looking, very attractive, and it's one of the things that many Linux distributions, regardless of size, I'm smaller distributions, even many of the bigger distributions, they have sometimes terrible websites, ugly websites. Sometimes the websites don't have good navigation. It's hard to find information on them and things like that. Archcraft, this website is very well done. Now, what exactly is Archcraft? Again, I don't know anything about this going in, but according to the website, it's minimal, it's stunning, so it's supposed to be light, and it's supposed to look good. And it's window manager only is another thing. If I go to the features tab, because Really, just telling me it's minimal and it looks good doesn't really tell me much about the distro. Under features, they do list the programs that will be installed. So they have ABIF, which is the Arch Base Installation Framework, a generic offline installer. I'm not going to run through the installation. If you've installed one Linux distribution, you've installed them all. And I've installed a couple hundred Arch Base Linux distributions over the years. I really don't want to take the time to run through another installer. Uh, Grub2 and Plymouth, I mean, Xorg, these are all just standard Linux packages that are on almost every Linux distribution. There's really nothing to see there. LXDM is a display manager. Yeah, that's nothing special. Now, the window managers that are installed by default are OpenBox and BSPWM. Compton is the compositor. Polybar is the panel, I guess they're using in probably both OpenBox and BSPWM. Rofi is our command launcher really nothing too out of the ordinary actually uh, we do have some keyboard shortcuts some key bindings i may keep this page open off to the side because some of these key bindings don't look like they're very standard key bindings so i may need to come back to this so i will leave this up let me go ahead and pull up a vm all right so i'm gonna take a look at this using vert manager and when I first boot it off the live ISO we come to the LXDM display manager and there is a live user named live user we are asked for a password now I'm just gonna take a guess since the user was live user I'm gonna say the password is probably also live user if it wasn't the same as the username I have no idea what the password would have been. I would have had to go to the documentation to figure this out. Now, the screen resolution is not 1920 by 1080, which is the resolution for my monitor. So what I'm going to do is, I know they're using XORG, so they probably have XRender installed, XR&R. Um, does super and enter bring up a terminal? Super and enter does not. Super shift enter. Alt enter. Uh, what in the hell brings up a terminal? <laughs> All right, so already key bindings that most people use for tiling window managers just to bring up a terminal are already not working. Uh, typically in things like DWM and Xmonad, the default key binding to bring up D menu or some kind of run command prompt is super P. So super P, super P does work. Okay, so at least I can do this. I know looking through their list of programs installed that they have termite installed as far as a terminal. 
Oh, wow, that font. That's, that font is unreadable. It's small and it's blurry. Wow. Anyway, let me do a quick xrander space dash s. You guys are not going to see this command. xrander space dash s space 1920 by 1080 is the command I'm going to run just to get a proper screen resolution here. And wow, that is just so small. The font is just crazy small. It's even worse when I went to 1920 by 1080. I've never seen font that small out of the box, out of the gate with any Linux distribution. I don't know. <laughs> this is already starting out pretty bad. Uh, now, again, I, I want to give this a fair shot, but whoever is creating this distribution, th that's insane. Now, I mean, it really is ridiculous to have a font that small. I don't know what kind of display the creator of this distribution is running, unless he's running something from the mid 1990s, you know, maybe he's running one of those old 15 inch, you know, CRT monitors or something. But here in somewhat modern times, uh, we need a bigger font because that actually is hurting my eyes even looking at the screen right now. Uh, by the way, I don't know what window manager we're in. I was hitting super enter thinking it would bring up a terminal. I assumed we were probably in BSPWM, but remember, open box is also installed. So if I close this terminal and right click on the desktop, okay, so by default, it does launch you into OpenBox. OpenBox is the, I guess, the default window manager in LXDM unless you specifically change it over to BSPWM. We may take a look at BSPWM too in a second. I need to fix the wallpaper and the panel. You know what I probably need to do is I'm gonna preferences here in the, go to preferences in the menu and I wanna edit some stuff. I want to edit some of the open box configurations. Edit auto start. Let me click on that. And wow, this editor. I can't read the text. It is so small. This is unbelievable how small this text is. I really don't understand this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put xrander space dash s 1920 by 1080 in the auto start file. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. And I'm going to do that just so we get a proper screen resolution every time we log in. So what I want to do is I'm going to exit open box. Let me log out. S, are you sure? I'm assuming I have to type Y for yes. Okay, that worked. And then we'll go ahead and log back in with the live user password. All right, now we the panel is fixed. The wallpaper is fixed. We got a 1920 by 1080 screen resolution. But man, this font. It's too small to use. Seriously, I'm going to have to pause the recording for a second and see if I can figure out this font issue because there's no way I can read this. It is physically is hurting my eyes straining to, to read this four point font or whatever they're using here. If I go under preferences and I go to appearance settings, I wonder if that's right. I'm going to click on it and see what that brings up. Okay. And it brings up this uh, appearance tool where we can change the icons and the fonts. Great. Fonts, the default font is Scientifica Medium 8 Point. So, but if, if it's 8 Point font, it's the smallest 8 Point font I've ever seen. It's, it's more like 4 or 5 Point font. Man, this thing is extremely small. Let's see if I can make it like 11 Point. I'm going to go ahead and select that. And now when I right click, the open box menu is still small the windows look all right it really didn't do what i wanted it to do it says this font will be used as the default font when drawing user interface text okay you know i, I hate to do this but i'm gonna have to take the time to actually configure this thing just so i can read it i'm gonna have to figure out how to change the uh, the font and the open box config let me right click this is not what a first look <laughs> That first impression kind of video really needs to be, but I don't really have any other choice here. Let me open up the uh, rc.xml. Does that, and we change some font stuff in it? Yeah. Man, I can't read the text editor there, though. <laughs> this text editor is so small. Oh, I see some font settings. I see eight point font everywhere in this config here. So I'm just going to change everything that looks like it mentions eight point font. I'm going to change it to 11 point font and see if that fixes things. I may have to log back out and log back in to fix this. But even with the 11 point font in the programs themselves, 
that 11 point font looks very, very odd. I don't, are they using a bitmap font instead of a TTF font or OTF font, a true type font? Because bitmap fonts don't scale well. You pretty much, you have to view them at a specific size. And that may be why they have it set to such a small size as that scientific font. Maybe, maybe it only looks good at eight point font because bitmap fonts are a relic of the past, like the 1980s, 1990s, when you had much smaller screens and, you know, you didn't have a varying sizes as far as monitors and display resolutions everybody was pretty much using like 640 by 480 or whatever the heck those extremely small resolutions were back then now though these kinds of resolutions don't really work so i think i've already saved that so let me right click and see if i can find a way to restart open box go to the open box menu Man, this font is so small it's hard to navigate the menu open box restart and now, now that really didn't change anything either. Now, I don't know what's going on here. Let me exit open box. Let me log out and log back in. Type Y for yes. Kind of strange to have to confirm that you want to exit open box when you go through a menu system and have to click on exit. And it's not like you accidentally <laughs> chose to exit, but I, I don't mind that little safety measure. This, this menu is still too small. This menu is way, I, I can't do anything with this. Change the font. Okay, change the font for open box. Okay, at least they had change font as a menu. Uh, change font to sans regular. Yeah, heck, let's bump it up to 12 point font. All right, <laughs> all right, that works. Oh, thank God. All right, uh, at least I can read that. All right, so this is open box. Um, if I wanted to open up something, I'm just going to open up the file browser here. Can I open up? whatever they're using. I don't know if they're using Thunar and the fonts look like garbage, that scientific uh, font or whatever they were using. This is Thunar for the file manager here. Yeah, the icon set. Eh, it's not a bad icon set, kind of colorful. Uh, the poly bar at the top, you know, this is configured kind of nicely. Yeah, it's attractive. I can't read the font though. That font is so bad. Uh, can I change the font for poly bar? And whoever is making this, uh, it, you done. You put in a lot of work, but my God, you got to do something with those fonts. Can I change the polybar font? If I click on change font polybar, okay, we up that from sans 10 point to sans, I don't know, 12. Select that. All right, that's better. All right, we're, we're starting to get somewhere already. That's, that's a bit more readable. What are they using for wallpapers? Let's change the wallpaper. I click change wallpaper. It opens nitrogen. Okay. Because so much of this distribution seems to be all about style rather than function. I would expect they spent some time with wallpapers and icon sets and, you know, things like that. And it really is an attractive distribution. I just want to see. Most of the wallpaper packs, it looks like there's some archcraft artwork, you know, some branding. And that's actually nice. I kind of like the minimal looks, you know, just minimal colors here. Yeah, I, I really like that. I could work with something like that. Yeah, I don't mind that. You know what? I'm just going to go with it. I kind of like that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and exit open box. And let's go ahead and get into BSPWM and let's see how their BSPWM desktop looks. So first thing I want to do is go down here and choose BSPWM instead of open box. And then let's do the live user password. All right. Now, BSPWM looks pretty good. Uh, the panel at the top, I can actually read it, but that's polybar again. And we've already changed the font in polybar. So I think had I not changed it over an open box, I probably couldn't read the, the font in the polybar. Let me do a super enter and see if that brings up a terminal. It does. My God, though, that terminal font is still extremely small oh, yeah I don't know is xprop installed no it's not I was gonna see what terminal window what kind of terminal emulator the default terminal was uh, super shift C to close no super Q to close super X to close what are you using to close windows I'm gonna have to go back to the cheat sheet so let's check the key bindings for BSPWM and it looks like uh, 
Super Return, of course, got us the terminal. Super Shift Return opens a terminal in floating mode. Okay, that's interesting. How do I close a window? I mean, that's like other than opening stuff, <laughs> closing windows is probably the most important key binding. They put it toward the bottom of the list. Alt plus F4. Really? That's the best key binding you could come up with close window. Alt F4. A Windows key binding. No. Absolutely not. That's like the dumbest key binding. Alt and any function key should not be a key binding for anything important. Alt F4. How about Super Shift C or Super Q, Super X? I mean, most keyboards, especially hacker kind of keyboards like most Linux users, many of us don't even have function keys or we're using programmable keyboards where the function keys are actually on a second layer of the keyboard. Don't ever use the function key in a key binding, not for anything that actually you're going to use often like closing windows. Let me get back over here and I have to type alt, then I have to type the layer two key on my keyboard, I'm on my Ergo Ducks Easy. And then the four, because four is really gonna be function four, as long as I have the layer two key also pressed down. And that actually works, but it's, I have to do some finger gymnastics to make that work on my keyboard. Let me do a super P for the run prompt. Super P, I would assume brings up Rofi, that doesn't. A super D, Super R, Super R, I guess, gets us a run prompt. And ooh, I'm not sure, run as root. And that's not what I want. I don't want to open something as root. So let me escape out of that. What actually gets us Rofi, not Rofi as root, though. Just, I want to open up Rofi. Looks like we have mod plus N for Rofi network, mod plus M for the MPD Rofi menu, mod... X for the power session, I guess, menu, mod W for the Windows menu, and mod R for apps as root. Okay, well, how do you just launch Rofi? You know what? I, I know how I could figure this out. Let me open up a terminal, and I'm assuming Vim is installed. I'm going to open dot config slash sxhkd, the simple X hotkey daemon, and the SXHKDRC. You're, you're not seeing anything I'm typing because that font is just incredibly small. Heck, I, I can't see what I typed. I just went with it. I was hoping that I actually typed the correct things because the font is just uh, too damn small to read. And let me see in their key bindings what launches Rofi. Let me just do a search for Rofi. Uh, alt plus F1. Oh my God. They're using the Alt key and a function key. Oh. <laughs> uh, Alt F1. That, that's horrible. You know what? I'm done, guys. Uh, Alt Layer 2 F4 to close that. I tried, guys. I tried to give it a shot. Uh, you guys that want to try out Archcraft, go ahead. Uh, again, this it's not my kind of thing. I prefer stuff that is normal and is usable, not something that is somebody designed for screenshots and uh, has font that I can't read and requires keyboard shortcuts that no tiling window manager user in history has ever used for their tiling window manager. Before I go, I do want to thank a few people. I want to thank Michael, Gabe, Nate, Corbinian, Mitchell, Entropy UK, John, Devin, Fran, Arch5530, Chris, Chuck, DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George Lewis, Omri, Paul, Robert, Sean, Tobias, and Willie. These guys, they are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. They are the producers of the show. And these guys, None of these guys asked me to take a look at Archcraft, so I, I do want to thank each and every one of these guys. Now, some of these people on this next screen, some of you guys asked me to take a look at Archcraft. You know who you are. I still want to thank you, though. I appreciate your support over on Patreon because this channel is supported by you guys, the community. All right. Peace, guys.